your brain, you're in the nuts domain. Come on in, it's about to begin. Hi everybody, and welcome back to the Nerds Domain Podcast. This week I'm here with ja, John. Hello. And Jesse. Hi. There are too many J's, I got I, confused. Oh, I thought I was going to double check on the mirror or something. Uh, and we are down. doing a Criterion Collection <laughs> about the Hidden Fortress. Right. <laughs> uh, so, lured by gold, two greedy peasants escort a man and a woman across enemy lines. However, they do not realize their companions are actually a princess and her general. That sounds about right, right? Yeah. yeah. That's a pretty good sum up for the it film. It works. So, uh, Jesse, remind us what the Criterion Collection is. The Criterion Collection is a collection of movies that are deemed important by important people. <laughs> and they're typically the long cuts. So I need to keep reminding myself because every one of these people go, like, there's so much of this movie that could be cut in it. Probably was cut from the. These are these are shown in the way that the director originally intended. Yes, and that is key. Akira Kurosawa, this who directed this movie, yeah. goes a little long. He's a little long in the tooth. I will admit that. Normally, it's with likable characters. It wasn't three hours. True, it's close. Yeah, it wasn't that close. It's three hours like it. and nineteen minutes. Let's just put it this way: I watched half of this movie a month ago, and then the other half this. this so it, it took that long to finish it. <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, Akira Kurosawa is directing. Uh, this is, uh, according to the trivia, this was, uh, he did this movie kind of as a thank you to the uh, Toho Studios for letting him do slightly more artistic work, like Rashomon. Mm -hmm. Because Rashomon is that the Rashomon effect that is interesting and new in its own way, so I can see why this would be more standard, straight up movie. Um, we get to see Toho. Uh, Toshiro Mifun again. Yep. This is like his fifth or sixth movie with us. Because we keep watching Kirk. <laughs> so I'm, I'm wondering if this is a this is a, this is a Johnny Depp uh, Tim Burton relationship. Oh yeah. Two. Yeah. And I mean, like we we act like that's a new thing nowadays, yeah. but in reality, it's not. It's been going on for years. We just never noticed it. Yeah. Um, and my mind just totally went blank because I had a small list prepared. <laughs> Director that you totally wrote down, right? I, no, I didn't. I, it was like three examples of yeah, no, totally no. blanking on who they are. And so we'll like, just go on, but it happens. Fair enough. No, go yeah. to the internet, look it up. Sure. It's there. Sure. <laughs> um, so uh, the movie, it, obviously, there's a that's the quick example of what it's about. But uh, Johnny, you want to give us a you know what? No, you just did a summary earlier today. Jesse, you want to give us a longer summary than that? Longer summary than that. Let's see. Have you seen the movie The Treasure of Sierra Madre? Because no. if you have, you've watched this movie. No, it's... but I've played The Treasure of Sierra Madre on Fallout New Vegas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing, no, nothing along those lines. I can tell you about the last half of the movie. The first half of the movie I watched quite a bit ago. What, do, do, where's so, the half mark for you? The half mark is almost at the hour. It's when the movie starts getting interesting. Tell me when something. When they finally happens. left the Eden Fortress. Oh, okay. Oh, there's there's these fortress. two bumbling idiots who decide to join the army and fight, and then they arrive late and well, are mistaken for the wrong side. If no, I remember correctly, you have. So there are three territories at war, and I'm. It's been a month since I watched the film, yeah, so I'm not going to bother butchering their names. Uh, but there are three territories. Uh, Yep. Two, the main two are north and south of each other, yes. and the third one that is being warlike is to the side. I forget who's east. The and, east. And, and it is the, the that's the Yamana. The Yamana, that's the Yamana are, the, are the, the quote unquote the, bad guys. And then the Aki Yuki. Aki Yuki. Aki Yuki. Okay. Yes. And the then the Hama Yaka. Which one does the princess belong to? The Aki Aki Yuki. Aki, Aki Yuki. Akiyuki. So the so the so the princess of the Akiyuki territory um, is uh, in hiding uh, with her main general Akizuki. The princess of the Akizuki uh, territory is is at, and her people are at war with the Yama, Yamana. Yamana, um, and there is a friendly territory to the south, the Hayakawa. The Hayakawa. But the bad guys are blocking the border between the Akizumi and the Hayakawa. Yeah. Um, 
So the villagers, the two bumbling villagers, are uh, left their village and joined the army of the princess, the Yakizuki princess. But they're lose. They've lost the war. It's done uh, when the movie opens. Yeah, they they even arrived too late, and they didn't no, see any fighting. They at were all, all they, no. They well, they may they, not have they, seen any fighting. They they, they they state very clearly they arrived, arrived late, and that's why they had to bury okay. the dead bodies. Yeah. So yeah. So, yeah. so they're they're done. The, the the war is over. Other than the oppressors are still there, you know, mopping up. So they're on the losing side, and they've le- they've left their village and have no money. There's no, there's no glory. There's no, you know, nothing for them to get for joining the army. Um, they also sold their houses to pay for their armor and weapons, and weapons right. which they which, don't have when the movie opens. Right, because they've been stripped of it by yeah. the bad guys. Uh, and so they are on the road bickering and arguing and yelling at each other, blaming each other for, for their misfortune. Um, when they find um, this little mountain pass um, and there's a branch that has a piece of gold that somebody has hollowed out the branch and stuck a piece of gold in it and so they figure if there's one there's got to be more because well, gold they, doesn't grow in trees yeah gold doesn't grow in trees that's, I think that's a line yeah. from the movie even um, so their their plan is to find the rest of it when this big burly dude who they don't know what to make of um, comes out of the woods and just like stares at him, and they're worried he's going to kill him. And they're very, they're they're very bad at hiding the fact they have gold. They're, they're like, bad at everything. yeah, but they're it's like in their hands, and they're like waving it around in his face. And they're like, oh, you didn't see that, and they tuck it away. And it's stupid. Yeah. Um. Then it, so they think this guy's a bandit of some kind, and they're going to. Um, at first, they're going to just try to get away from him. But then I think they he joins them at their fire. Yeah, he does. And he they, just walks up like like a boss. Yeah, yeah. and sits down and they like they eventually talk and they're like and he's like I could use your help. I've got a plan. I know where more gold is. And they're like, oh, well, we're in. And they basically they think they're getting hired on to help. Well, and he he offers the or he offers to bring them on because they have they have a plan on how to get back to Hayakawa. I thought that came out later. No, no. no. Though at they, the fire, they're they, like, well, we were just gonna go back into Yamana, 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 Yamazuki. No, they were gonna go to Hamana. They, they were gonna go to the other province that wasn't involved. Go through them to go up to. The no, they were going to the attacking province. That's to it, go, yeah, go to the, through the attacking. Yeah, because yeah. no one would expect that. Right, the border yeah. the border between the two friendly territories is covered by the bad guys. And the border between the the beaten territory and the bad guys is kind of yeah. kind of difficult. Yeah. But the like but our best but the border between the other friendly and the bad guys, they figure can't be that guarded because they're all up here in yeah. the war. So the territory in the south has got to be clear. So they're gonna Go to the bad guys' territory, and then go down to the other good guys' territory and sneak across the border that way. Um, and the, gener- the the bandit they think they're going to work for uh, turns out to be the general of the Yamazuki Aki Akizuki territory, and is is going to sneak the princess along the way. The princess whose name is Yuki Akizuki. Yes. Wow. Like that's just, a, just too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'm sure there are names yeah. here, you know, that, yeah. that would bother somebody. So um, there's this hidden fortress that everybody's looking for. They're hiding out in it. Um, the bad guys are looking for it because all of this province's gold is missing mm-hmm. um, and presumed to be hidden in the hidden fortress. Um, turns out it is, and uh, the princess and the general. And several of her other servants are there hiding out, waiting for the right time to move. Uh, the bad guys eventually find it. So uh, the two villagers, the princess and the samurai, decide to take off. And the servants all stay behind to confuse and confound the enemy as much as they can before yeah. they get killed. Um, so that's a big thing. Um, the princess decides to, uh, she's very vocal and wants to fight. And they, they, they try to use reverse psychology on her to get her to pretend to be a mute. She's, she sees through their reverse psychology, but then agrees that it is the right plan and agrees to, to play the mute uh, for her passage. 
until and, she gets to the new and, territory. And it's clear that later that being mute in this time is like un, you're unclean or something. Yeah, it's like, a you're very considered uh, being yeah, it's, terrible. It's a um, mental handicap, yeah. as we would put it today. Um, She's an attractive individual who's approached by. Well, so oh, to, they, to get there, to get there, yeah. on their travels, they stop at yeah. this, I, what I assume is like a flop house of some sort. A, a, it's a brothel, a village is a, it's primarily yeah. a brothel. Yeah, they said that the hide among men, we must be coming or something like that. Yeah. They yeah. Walk in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so they, this guy is trying to get these people to um, rent time with his, his um, prostitute. And then he sees this girl and wants to buy her. To buy her. Yeah. And they convince her that, oh, well, she's mute. So clearly, yeah. that's everybody not in there was interested in her until they heard the word mute. Yeah. And was like, mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was a deal breaker, I guess. I, I <laughs> did that one, but I understand it's for the time, but like, I can't imagine why being mute would be that big of a deal. Right. So, well, it, I mean, it, it was not like they were seeking a wife or anything. Yeah. But it leads to other problem, other behavioral problems. Yeah, and that is that's your, true. You're mute. You don't. You have other mental deficiencies as well. Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's the reason. They weren't having a problem with the lady who was struggling. Yeah, well, um, but yeah, she didn't talk either. Well, there was also some weird rape issues in this movie. There yeah. were. Uh, the, what, the, so when they leave the brothel, they picked up another woman um, who becomes basically the maid to the princess. Although I don't think she, she doesn't know the story. No, um, but she picks up on it. Yeah, she picks up on this. There's something weird about the princess and the. They, well, general. they buy her out of the prostitution. Right. And of she course. refuses to go away. They're like, "You're free, leave." Yeah. And they're like, "No." Yeah. And she's like, "No, I'm going with you." Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to remember. Was this the timeline? Is that like the the? That's their first stop, really. Yeah, first real but stop it's like their first years. night, even. Yeah. Yeah. Of being alone, so yeah, the general goes off to scout around. Again, the the peasants think he's just a bandit. Um, he disappears, and the peasants and the prin- the princess is sleeping or pretending to be asleep, and the peasants are there, and they immediately are like, "Hey, you know what? Uh, we could totally rape this woman, and she's never going to say anything." And, and draw straws to see which one of them leaves to let the other one do it. Right. First, like first. She, she's not going to be able to tell the guy who's yeah. really protecting her that yeah. they did it, yeah. even if she was mute. Yeah, and, and, they're, and they're, they draw straws to see which of them gets to go first, yeah. and the other one has to go watch for the bandit to come back. Yeah. Um, because they think he wants the, the girl, um, the new girl, and the um, recently purchased or recently liberated woman has to stand over the princess with a rock. Yeah, and threatened to smash the peasants' brains in. Yeah, it so was just, it was just, and and it seemed acceptable in the society that that it, might happen. Right, and, and, and I just, oh, that that was that was played up as a laugh, even. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was the big comedy moment. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it was very uncomfortable, uh, um, and it may have, it may just be the sensibilities of the modern age, but I mean, the peasants weren't held in any sort of honor code; they were peasants. Yeah. So I mean, a, a samurai like the general. Should never do that, in, in my reading. What I've read about, yeah, the code. Well, we learned that from Seven Samurai. Like that was part of that was part of it. Yeah, right. But I, I don't live in the culture, so yeah. I'm not no, going to say true. that yeah. this is the thing. But the honor, the the honorable knight that I'm familiar with from European history sort of carries over to the samurai, uh, at least stereotypically. Yeah. So the general would never have done anything like that, you know, on his own. But the peasants. They don't have those qualms. They just do whatever they want as long as they answer to the uh, aristocracy. Yeah, and they, and they even so, thought the, the general was doing it at the time because he, yeah. he explained the whole thing as she's his. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because they because again he's they're under the guise of bandit and his girl, and yeah. So so after that uncomfortable <laughs> moment, yeah, um, they get back out on the road. This and the, we kind of glazed over. Oh, yeah. They they were. Uh, Moving the horse, the moving the gold, which is all hidden in branches and wood, on a cart with a horse, the the bad guys figure out who they are based on the descriptions they've gotten from other other peasants. So when they they don't want to, but they use the horse to buy the other woman free, the other woman's freedom, 
then they have to carry the gold on their back, which I think was a ridiculous. Amount. No, they started on they started with it on their back, and then they put it in a cart with the two fools. Is it the other it. way? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there was there were you know they started out with horses. Yeah. Then yeah. they sold it. Yeah. It was on their back. That's what it was. Back and them wearing that gold on their backs just seemed ridiculous. Yeah. Like I have no real concept for how heavy gold is, but they're carrying hundreds of sticks with yeah. six inch, two you know maybe two inch diameter rods of gold and that just seemed too heavy and they yeah. just like love that around like it's well and they were excited about it because they wanted that gold they yeah wanted because that bad yeah and and the, the idea was they were carrying their portion yeah like they thought they were going to get paid their portion so they were yeah. like as long as we've got our money on our backs the moment we can get away we get we get away yeah so and the, 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 the whole, oh, sure enough, whole show they're always the, the big running joke is, is they'll fight over one gold bar even though one gold bar would be enough to set them up for the rest of their life. They, they yeah. would acknowledge the fact that just one bar would set them up, but they can't leave anything behind. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they can't let anybody get one up above them. Yeah. Um, so the they, fact they sell the horse gives them the cover they need. Because they, yeah. they sell yeah, the horse and they have two women. women. Yeah. So then when, they get, when the bad guys catch up to them, they're like, no, this isn't the right group. We're looking for three men and one woman. You guys are two women. And three men with no horses. Well, two men because the, at that point on the on the path with the cart, the general had gone to scout. Okay, so yeah, so they so by freeing the woman, they actually saved themselves. Yeah, and, which I thought was kind of funny. Yeah, they were oh, yeah. complaining that they'd have to sell the horse, but then that's ended up saving their lives that they had done that because otherwise they would kill it on the spot. So they do eventually get stopped by soldiers, mm-hmm. um, and uh, the soldiers figure out that something's going on, and that's when the general. Kills two of the soldiers like real quick, yeah. and then rides the other two down in what I think is a really good chase scene. One of oh, the yeah. other two down. Well, yeah, no, he ends up killing both of them. Does he kill both of them? He kills the second one as they, he's getting to the camp. Yeah. He kills him, and then there's the camp. The chasing was great. I mean, the, the horsemanship, the way he was riding, mm-hmm. was sort of. Well, I and, just I couldn't grasp the fact that he accidentally rode into the enemy encampment. They had full banners flying, I and mean, they, they made it clear that the banners were. Yeah. This is not a hidden encampment. Yeah, it's not like it's a hidden fortress. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, he just, I couldn't he's, resist. He, he can't even stop his horse until he's literally in the middle of it. Well, but once he's already been seen, they know what he's done. He's carrying. He has a sword in his hand. It's got blood on it. They're gonna. It's either go in and acknowledge it or run. And the honorable thing is, he has to go in and acknowledge it. it yeah. Would be my read on that. And maybe I'm off, but right. that was my read on it. Go ahead. So, um, yeah. So in the in the encampment is where we're at. Yeah, yeah, camp. yeah. Is is this the one where he's recognized by the enemy general? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And fights a uh, spear duel. A, a, what was it? I just a duel. I don't think that's like where you draw your sword. Yeah. Okay. But they, they do they do yeah. fight a duel with the, yeah. with the unspoken understanding that he'll get away if he wins. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's to first blood is the rule. Yeah. And so, he, they'll they'll have to let him go if he if the, I don't know if it was the first blood or the death because the other general was very upset when he didn't finish the deed. He well, even tried to kind of come back. And, he, he explains that later, like you can't defeat your opponent and not kill them. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't the first yeah, blood. Yeah, it was too yeah, death. Oh yes, I okay. Point. Well, yeah. So the yeah the enemy general uh, has to let him go because he gets beat by the good guy and. <clears throat> They continue on there. Yeah, um, and they end up in a fire, part of the fire, fire festival. Yeah. festival. Not a good place to hide all your golden twigs <laughs> no. in the middle of a fire I festival. I think it worked out pretty well. It did, it actually. did in the end. Yeah, but so, uh, the, was... so the bad guys have this ritual that they do where they celebrate the season. I don't or know something. what the fire rituals for. But I assumed it was about to stop insects. the thing. I, I had the odd feeling that it was about like a. a Rebirth or a yeah, death sort a, of thing. It's, like it's all about of, men get, or insects, and insects die. Or yeah, something. well, get rid of the get rid of the old, and yeah. you know, embrace the new, and live you know, live on, and which is, is a really uh, pivotal moment for the princess. Yeah, uh, as we learn, she learns to accept her fate and like see the enemy in a new light, and it's it's a big you know, it's a big thing that I don't think I fully grasp. Now that it's been a month since I watched it, like, um, but at the time I was like, "Wait, what happened?" I think I, I kind of felt like it was more one of those sort of things that she was finally relating with the common people, whereas the entire time there she had separated herself from. She wasn't talking with anybody. She wasn't. maybe, but I, I mean, she was also very fiery, and and she yeah. she was all like, she wanted to save everybody, all of her servants who yeah. let themselves die. She wanted to save them, so. 
I don't like. I don't know. Like I didn't. I didn't fully grasp what was happening. Sometimes you have to sacrifice a twig, right? But the but she would. But like it seemed like the point she was getting to was, okay. I hate my enemy. She hated her enemy, but then after that fire festival, she's like, you know what? We're all people. Yeah. And and like this, we you know, there are things we can let go. And I think she kind of let go of the hate that she felt. Like she still yeah. wanted to save her people. But it wasn't as she wasn't feeling as pent up, the pent up rage that she started out in the movie. Those people were jerks. Mm-hmm. They 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 forced them to throw away their sticks, which they didn't want to. But that's understandable. But then they just decided to throw the whole cart into the fuck pit. No, that was the, the that was the samurai who did that. Did he push the cart into? He it? I thought the people. The cart. Oh, okay, no, no, good, no. good. They were like they were like, hey, throw this, you know, build the yeah. fire up through sticks, and the peasants. That were like, makes no, it because no, if they no. would pick up the sticks, they'd have noticed that they were yeah. heavier than. Yeah, okay, they, that they, makes more they sense. were like, no, we're going to sell this. <laughs> and the samurai's like, no, throw it in the fire. And he pushes it in. Okay, good, good. Um, so. Yeah, so. I feel better about that. Yeah, that, I must have missed that one. So they burned all the wood at the fire festival, cart mm-hmm. and all. Um, and the samurai was all like, not a big deal. Mm-hmm. I was under the impression that, that it had a low melting point, And I was a little concerned. Like, gold has a low melting point. I, I think that might be, again, movie magic. Well, but then they also went from those small strips to, like, larger chunks. chunks. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess it, they did actually melt. Yeah. But, yeah. It wasn't one big pile of yeah. liquid gold. Which... I also would think that, like, they would see the gold in the ground. Like, yeah. why was there just a bunch of dirt over top of it? But then I it guess maybe ash. they kick well, or they kick dirt on top of the fire when they were done. Yeah. So, like, that kind of made sense a little. I, I was a little surprised that everybody just dispersed as soon as it was over. Yeah, yeah. So well, the culture thing, we're not yeah. familiar with those kind of festivals. They dig up, they dig up the gold, put it back on their backs. They're not even sure they, they got up, it all this time. They dig up some of the gold. They yeah, know they true. only got some of the gold because it doesn't weigh nearly as much. And then they they bolt. Yeah. Again. But the uh, the peasants figure out that they've got like forty percent, like like let's just say the gold equaled a hundred units. Yeah. Because I forget it was two hundred. Okay, yeah. it was two hundred units. They're like, well, between us right now, we've only got like 40% of that, but we could totally carry more. Like, we're stronger than this. We were carrying more before. Yeah. And so if we divide it up this way between the five of us, we yeah. could totally get this. Yeah. So they go back and they yeah. and start digging up more of the gold out of the ash and dirt. Yeah. And the um, enemy, or, you know, another troop of the enemy shows up. Yeah, um, so they're chased to the countryside. Yep. Um, there has to have been some time pass. It's very unclear how much time yeah. has passed. Um, so they get chased to the countryside. There's muskets galore. I did like where the, the two fools hot hid, because I seriously would not have been able to yeah, tell. Yeah, no. Like, it wasn't like they were holding uh, two leaves in front of them, and oh, nobody yeah. saw them. But, like, literally, I'm looking at the thing, and I'm like, why are we looking at... Oh, oh, they're... The peasants are hiding. Yeah, yeah. And I would shrubbery. never yeah. have seen that. Like I wouldn't have noticed. They even pick up the shrubbery, move, and set back down. But if you was to move from yeah. looking when they set back down, yeah. they blend right back in again. Yeah, it was. So that was impressive, yeah. at least. Um, and I know it was meant to be comical, but it wasn't like over the top comical. It was yeah. like realistic ish. Um, so eventually, the the princess and the general get caught. Yes. Um, and the enemy general who sh- fought the gen- who fought the, the spear duel yeah in the spear duel he shows up to um, verify that it is who who they are um, he does with a scarred up face yeah with a scarred up face explaining that since he lost his lord um, beat him so badly that he became, got this giant scar and it's a freaking big scar yeah, yeah. And that's how time has had to have passed yeah also, yeah because it's healed up yeah um, so they get the, the next morning. They put the the princess and the uh, the princess's general on horses, and then put the servant girl behind them. They're going to take them off to be headed to be beheaded. Mm-hmm. And the enemy general actually fights off the the people cap that have them captured and helps oh, them escape. Well, well, what did I miss? Something we've missed the fact that where they get captured. Oh, is, is yeah, at the border that they yeah. were yeah. trying to get to. The, yeah, the, yeah. The two bumbling idiots just leave yeah. through the open gate. Without any gold. Without well, gold. Yeah, they confessed to everything yeah. that they were helping them. Well, they tried. Nobody, really Nobody believed believes them. them. Oh, don't they get captured twice? No. No, they, no, they, like, they, they went back and tried to claim a reward 
for turning them in. And when they do that, they're told, well, we've already caught them. That's what it was. The gen- that's the part we f- that we forgot from the beginning. The general's sister yeah. looks like the prin- looks enough like the princess, someone who's never seen her before, would say she m- matches the description of the princess. And yeah. she gives up her life to the bad guys, and they behead the, the stand-in, thinking yeah. they've killed the princess they were searching for. That was another big element. So when the peasants get to the bad guys at the border and they're like, hey, we've been walk- we've been helping the princess and her general get get here. They're, they're right behind us on the road. They're coming. The, the bad guys don't believe them because they're like, we already beheaded the princess. Yeah. She's been dead for weeks or months yeah. at yeah. this point. And, and, and so now we're at the point where they were caught at the guard, the border yes. and the fools show up and they're like, oh, well, they're coming. And they're like, oh, we already caught them again. Yeah. It's too yeah. late. Yeah. Um, so the fools get nothing again. Yeah. But they're alive. Yeah. yeah. So they head into their own country because they're originally from um, Hayakama or Kawa. Hayakawa. Hayakawa. Um, the enemy general frees them, frees the two, the, the, the princess and her general and the mm-hmm. servant Certainly. girl and the horses with the gold run off and then everybody runs away and they all get away f- free and clear. And the two peasants get, see these horses with all this gold. Well, the two peasants are walking through a desolate wasteland desert area. Yeah. And all of a sudden these three horses that they, four, four, four horses. horses with gold on their backs. Yeah. Come running up. Yeah, um, they start fighting over the gold again. Yeah, because yeah. why wouldn't you? They, yeah. they had just admitted that they will always be friends for what they went yeah. through. Oh, they'll yeah. never fight again. Nothing well, will ever come between them. And then the and, gold I mean, good back. lord. I, well, these are my three horses. You only get that one. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, re- seriously, guys. Like, yeah. seriously, what's wrong with you? Um, they get caught by the soldiers of that country and arrested, yeah. or chased off and arrested eventually. Yeah, because they have horses and they're full of gold. Peasants yeah, and yeah. yeah. There's gold. Yeah. And then. Uh, they get brought before somebody important, and it's revealed to be the princess and the general in his full armor, which looked really. I really like the crescent on his oh, yeah the, the helmet. It really was impressive. Yeah, um, and the enemy generals there now working for the princess as well, and they're they uh, rewarded. Yeah, they get paid the original ten yeah uh, micro units of gold yeah. that they were promised yeah. for joining the army. Yeah. So they get exactly what they were originally promised at the beginning, no more, no less. Yep, and um, that's pretty much the movie. I mean, I, yeah, they t- I mean, they tell you like the princess is going to use the other two hundred units of gold to restore, rebuild yeah. her people, and yeah, so they can't give that away, and you know, so yeah. Um, so I enjoyed the movie a lot. I agree. I did too. I really enjoyed the last half of the movie. <laughs> I, the, the first half is slow. It really is. Uh, but it's also Akira Kurosawa, and I'm expecting it now. Yeah. I was, but I wasn't expecting it to be this slow and this uninteresting. I mean, I was really... If it wasn't for this, I'd have never got to the good part. I would never would have finished it. They okay. could have literally cut out the first part and said, there was a hidden fortress, they've got gold, now watch the show. And I'd have been just as happy. I think all that bit where the... It just went too the band, they, they sit down with the bandit at the fire. And, yeah, you know, like them talking on the road. The first part was kind of necessary, but they should have immediately gotten yeah. to where they find the branch of gold. They could have sped up quite a bit. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, but I do. I it's a character that was style. It is um, Seven Samurai. I really think they could cut out half an hour of that, and it's still a solid movie and exactly the same story. But yeah. I mean, yeah. just there's a lot of interstitial like panning large panning shots okay. it and, would be a it would be a very fine like you're cutting out yeah 30 seconds here yeah oh yeah 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 it, it's not like there's 30 seconds of scenes no it's no. like i'm gonna cut this 30 seconds i'm gonna cut this minute and a half where we're just looking at this field yeah. or you know, stuff like that so there's stuff that they that uh Kira kurosawa could do to speed things up but we don't uh, need a half hour of the general creepily staring at the two bandits yeah that did run i will admit that did run long but yeah. In watching, I don't know. Did you guys watch the the little eight minute short with George Lucas? No. no. Okay, so included on the Criterion Collection version of Hidden Fortress is a an exclusive interview with George Lucas talking about the Kurosawa and um, uh, specifically Hidden Fortress because that those two things influenced what George Lucas did with Star Wars a lot. 
Um, and he, you know, he started explaining that Akira Kurosawa does this thing where he shows this wide lens and he shows you this whole background and you see this countryside and you see the characters in the yeah. countryside and then he goes to the, to the characters to remove them from that so you just focus on them. So you're not seeing the background. The background doesn't matter anymore. All you're doing is... So there's a lot of that in both in both this and Seven Samurai and probably Rashomon and probably everything else he's done. Yeah. So it's his technique and his style. Um, he it, also mentioned... I'm looking at the yeah. IMDb. Uh, apparently he also mentions that he likes Hidden Fortress for telling the story through the eyes of two lesser characters. Yes. And then he tries to do that somewhat in uh, Star Wars with C three PO and R two. Well, and if you look at the care the stories, this is very similar in a oh, lot yeah. of ways to A New Hope. Um, and R two D two and C three PO are the quote unquote bumbling fools, although right. a little less uh, they're, greedy, yeah, they're but they have their own things. They're less comical about it, but mm-hmm. they are still not the main yeah. characters. But and that's how we get introduced to a lot of stuff. Um, and there still is a general. I mean, if you look at Solo in that way, and Luke kind of fits yeah. in that same role that goes along with the princess. Um, although the princess in Star Wars seems, uh, uh, Princess Leia seems a lot more capable. Yeah. Like she's perfectly fine picking up a blaster, but at the same well, time, yeah, she Princess fought. Yuki yeah. like beat people with a stick. Yeah, yeah, that, because um, she didn't have a real sword. Yeah, so um, which she was trained to use. <laughs> I mean, there's there's several like there's several steps here that are very parallel to Star Wars, and he te- he says that Kira Kurosawa, his style is very important to what happened in Star Wars. And and it was it's eight minutes. It's totally worth watching um, if you guys get a chance. Yeah, so It, it wasn't on the Hulu version. On the Hulu version? Yeah. No, no. It was when I searched on Hulu for Hidden Fortress, it popped up as another option. Oh, really? Like, it's I a clip. That I'll, I'll find right. it. Yeah. yeah. When you search on I, there, don't look just for videos. Look for clips as well in just an eight minute. I looked for the hit in it and found the Hidden Fortress. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so that said... This is another Kara Kurosawa movie. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's the more the same. I like it. I don't, I like him well enough, but I don't think he deserves all of the movies that he ever made on this, on the Criterion Collection movie list. He has at least 25, because you can buy the, a collection of his 25 that were on Criterion Collection. Oof. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Don't worry, we're going to watch 10 more. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, I like um, Mifun, Toshiro Mifun. Yeah. Uh, but he doesn't look the same as he did in no, the other couple of movies right, we yeah. saw with him. With him in well, it. In the, yeah, because in, in this one, he's the, he's arguably the hero and the main character. Yeah. Uh, I Whereas, feel like in Seven Samurai, he was lanky and skinny. Yeah. And in this one, he has meat on him. And, oh, see, I would I would have not... I would have put him as a brute. I thought he was... Like, he wasn't jacked like a modern yeah. you know, football player, pro wrestler, but he was... The beast of yeah. the group, and maybe that's just because I've seen the anime that translated the Seven Samurai. Well, and I think it but also had, comes to with his movements because he's kind of um, he was a little, uh, but again, yeah. he was the biggest guy. Yeah, that's true, true. So that's why I got the yeah. beast kind of aspect. But yeah, yeah. Monkey, oh, yeah. And he pretend like he pretends to be a monkey or something. Yeah, like and that, that might so be part of it too. That yeah. might be part of that that thing in my mind. Right. Um, so, so, did you guys like the cinematography? I know it was long, but did you like the cinematography? Did I you did. Like the, I, the setups and the, well, with the cinematography, three with the story. I mentioned it earlier. The Treasure Sierra Madre is one of my favorite westerns. I love westerns. As I was watching this, I kept thinking, well, I know where they got the idea for it from. This mm-hmm. follows almost the exact same storyline. Two guys get greedy, go in, bump into a guy who knows what they're doing. Yeah, they have a falling out, and it's all about greed. How people fight with each other over the smallest amounts. Then I looked it up, and the Treasure Sierra Madre came out ten years earlier. Yeah, ten years and earlier. Earlier, and I do know Akira really liked American Western movies. Yeah, yeah, he totally. Uh, yeah. I can see nowhere else online where it states that he used that as a reference, but he did like American westerns, and it was a big one. Wow. Yeah, no. Um, well, I mean that that's sort of the thing with uh, uh, Kurosawa. Um, in the the lore of movies, he loved westerns that we were making here in America, and then those became unpopular here in America, and then later Kurosawa films became popular with directors here in America. Yeah, and like, I mean, I again, I'm not a, a historian, a Hollywood historian, but like, I'm getting like from the people that talk about it, I get this sort of like, they were like, oh, Kira Kurosawa is amazing. And I love everything he does, and it's just so original, and blah, blah, blah. And, like, years later, people are like, oh, wait, 
he was just looking at our westerns. Yeah. And well, and some of them even yeah. went, "Hey, this feels like a western. Let's make the Magnificent Seven. Well, yeah, and, they did. And they made the they it, made the Magnificent Seven yeah. based on Kurosawa stuff, which was based on the old westerns yeah, that yeah. they quote unquote hated yeah. at the time. Again, I'm not saying putting words in anybody's mouth. That's just the impression I've gotten mm -hmm. from all the trivia that I've read. Yeah. Um, other than the Star Wars connection, what what else do you guys see here that you could that other than it's clearly there's the the treasure of Sierra Madre. Are there other movies you see that that pulled from this? Well, <laughs> I'm sure that I could come up with some examples if I did some research um, and thought about it longer. But you put me on the point like that, yeah. Um, and I can't think of any. But you know, the, all the I mean, it's. This movie has all the tropes of the princess in danger mm -hmm. with travel. You know, uh, there are movies where the princess is over in the castle and you got to get to the castle and save her. Those don't really apply. Like yeah. we watched um, Legend with Tom Cruise. No, Legend. Is it? Yeah, Legend. Yeah, yeah, Legend with Tom Cruise. Yeah. Um, and, and all that. And the big devil guy, Tim Curry. Um, we watched that recently at our mm -hmm. house. And... Uh, um, you know that's not the same as this one, but I mean there are still some tropes and some yeah. People, are, yeah. people compare movies and say, "Oh, it's just Star Wars retold." Well, Star Wars is just this retold, and you know, with different characters and different you know plot lines and whatever. I'm not accusing anybody of ripping anybody off, but yeah. they're they're out there. I just can't think of any off the top of my head. I was impressed by the level, the amount of extras they had at the beginning. Oh yeah, because there was that the, there was a a, a, a revolt. And there was just hundreds of people oh, sure, yeah. running around. And I don't remember, I don't think we've seen anything in Criterion Collection that had that number of all at once um, of extras. I would argue that, I mean, again, Kurosawa was able to pull it off in Seven Samurai because there are seven, they're not doing yeah. the same thing, but there's they go to a bigger city yeah. to recruit and there's tons of people. I just, I, maybe it's just I don't remember a mob like that, and that's what's what's kicking yeah, in my head that makes uh, it feel different. Like we forgot a scene where the the uh, two peasants are buried, uh, uh, trapped by the enemy army, and they have to bury bodies and dig holes and search for the gold that they can't find. And there's like a hundred guys, and then there's a riot, and yeah. Um, so yeah, like you know, the, the large crowds like that were not common in the films we've watched uh, yeah. from this era but I think Kurosawa had a couple yeah. does yeah. anyone know what list of this falls into on Kurosawa's films is it an early one a late one a mid one the eight is after Rashomon is um, it before the Seven Samurai or? I don't know I can look I think it 58 is 58 means it's kind of like right in the middle isn't it yeah uh, 54 yeah. was Seven Samurai so this is after yeah okay we're in the middle. We may not right in the middle, but like yeah, he had well, done yeah. a few films, and then, as we said in the trivia on IMDb, yeah. it, it states that he did this one as a a thank you for them oh, yeah. letting him make the ones he wanted. Yeah. So this was like his Matrix Two. Um. <laughs> oh. So what was his first movie? If you get that uh, list I'm, up, I'm looking. I'm looking. Life and career criticism filmography. There we go. Um, list of creative works. Give me a second. I'm getting there. Just kind of curious. Well, he was writer, director, and a producer on this as well. Uh, his first movie was in 43. Oh, wow. His last movie was in 93. Oh, okay. Well, that's 50 years of video of movies. Yeah. It's a lot. I hear Yojimbo is a really important one. Yeah. yeah. Um, which we may watch because I'm pretty sure it's on there. Throne of Blood. That's a good movie name. This is a good title, yeah. Yo, Jimbo's one I've been on my list of watching. Right on. Um, yeah, so he's got, you know, he's got 50 years there. This falls somewhat early. Yeah. As far as that goes. Well, no. This Hidden Fortress? Or? Yeah. 54 instead of 93. I mean. On IMDb it says 58. 58. 58, sorry. You're right. 58 instead of 93. What was his last movie then? Uh, Has it been translated? Madadario. Yeah, okay. Ma da da yo yeah, uh, ninety one. He had Rhapsody in August. That sounds familiar. Yeah, I, I'm honestly 
I haven't seen it by any means, but it, it sounds. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah. overall, um, Jesse, what did you think of the movie? Star rating wise, yeah. If we took the first half of the movie, I'd give it about a one. Okay. The second half of the movie, I'd give it about four. So all together, it's an average movie. Two and a half. Two and a half. Uh, Johnny. Um, I'd say three. Um, I have overall very positive opinion of this movie. It's not as good as Seven Samurai. Yeah. Um, but it's still worth checking out. Okay. I'm going to go three and a half. I think that the movie is good. I enjoyed it. But I think its impact on what Lucas gave us in Star Wars is really important. And that all by itself makes it a little bit better for me because I can see where what what tropes and what pieces he grabbed from here yeah and without, without this we wouldn't have the Vulcans or the Klingons or any of that I said Star Wars oh time. I know yeah you did okay because earlier I said Star Trek and I meant Star Wars <laughs> um so if if you like what movies would you like if you watch this or what what if you like certain movies you would like this as well like Seven Samurai I think is clear yeah. Treasure hey. Sierra Madre. <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. Anything else? Uh, it, it's a good movie. Honestly, if you're wanting to get into Kurosawa films, so I don't think it should be your first one. No, I really think Seven Samurai should yeah. be the first one, and then Rashomon. I think in that order, because Rashomon, Seven Samurai is a very solid, straightforward movie. There's a lot of themes there, but it's a very solid, straightforward movie, and then Rashomon gets a little weird in a yeah. good way. And then this one's, again, a very solid, straightforward movie. What do you think, John? What movies would people like if they? Yeah, I mean that that imaginary list I was talking about earlier, where you okay. go, oh Star Wars, this, you know this is like Star Wars, and yeah, that's like Star Wars. So yeah. Star I mean, Wars, yeah, I mean, it's, fair enough. Star if Wars. I like I said, I wasn't expecting that question. That that thought wasn't in my mind, but I know that given time, I could come up with a list. Okay. All right, well, I think that'll do us tonight for the Criterion Collection, or the Nerds Domain on the Criterion Collection. We're actually on it. Um, You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. You can go over to our website, sign up for the newsletter on the right-hand side. You can go over to uh, patreon.com slash nerdsdomain and support us there. You can go over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating, and you can uh, find our shirts over slash and we can talk to you guys real soon.